Okay, in this video, we are going to look into building a capacitive touch switch. And I've built it on my breadboard. And this is my capacitive touch sensor. I'm just using a coin. So when I touch the coin, you activate the LED on the breadboard. Now there are ICs that are designed to do this same function. Here's a breakout board for the MPR121. And you could have up to 12 sensors. And, but you need a microcontroller, so it runs on the I2C bus, you can see here. So you need a, like an Arduino Nano or a Uno to run this board. But in this video, we're going to build a discrete capacitive touch switch. And I'm using the 4000 series CMOS ICs. So the first IC there is the CD4093. That's a Schmidt trigger NAND gate, and there's four NAND gates on that chip. And the second IC is the CD4013, and it's a dual D flip-flop. And I'm, I'm only going to use one of the flip-flops uh, in this circuit. So we're going to have a look how to build this circuit and how it works. So next we'll get into the schematic of this little capacitive touch switch. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my capacitive touch switch. And I'm using 4000 series CMOS logic, so there's no microcontroller involved, so there's no code. And you can see the three NAND gates. I'm using three out of the four NAND gates, and they're inputs are tied together so they're configured as inverters. And this is my D flip-flop. I'm using one of them. Now on a D flip-flop, the clock is positive edge triggered, so when you get a edge from low to high on the clock, whatever is on the D, whatever logic values on the D will be transferred to the Q and latched. Now when the Q output is low, the LED will be off, and then when the Q output is high, the LED will be on. Now if we go to the very left, we can see an RC inverter oscillator this is my R, this is my C, and that makes this into an oscillator and with this value of 0.47 microfarad C and 22K R we'll get an output clock of about 100 Hertz. Now if we change the capacitor to 0.1 microfarad we'll get output about 500 Hertz, but in this case we're going to be using 100 Hertz. Now that 100 Hertz clock is buffered by this inverter and feeds uh, this other part of the circuit. Now when the clock is high We'll have a high on the D input, we'll have a high on the input of this inverter, and we'll have a low on the output of this inverter feeding the clock. Now when the clock goes low, the D will go low, and the input to the inverter will go low. And then after a propagation delay, the output of this inverter will go high and trigger the clock. Now this propagation delay ensures that the output will be always be a zero when there's no uh, touch uh, sensor being activated. So every time the clock goes from a high to a low, we'll always clock out a zero and the LED will be off because of the propagation delay of this, of this uh, inverter. Now when we touch the sensor, we're putting capacitance on the sensor. So basically we're adding capacitance to this point here. So now when the clock is high, we're going to charge up this capacitor and we're going to have a, a, a voltage on this capacitor. So now when the clock goes low, it has to drain off the voltage from the capacitor through the resistor so now the time will be larger than the propagation delay. So when we touch the sensor, we're going to have a 1 at the D when the clock goes high from a, from a 0 to a 1. And that will clock a high out the Q output, which will turn on the LED. So every time we touch the sensor, we're going to charge up the capacitor. And then when the clock goes low, uh, it will be longer to charge, discharge the capacitor than the propagation delay, and we'll get a 1 output. And when we release the sensor, and we'll get a zero output of the flip-flop. So that's basically how it works. So we're learning about RC inverter oscillators, uh, Schmidt trigger NAND gates, D flip-flops, and propagation delay, and how we could use it to our advantage. Now you could use any metallic object for your touch sensor. I replaced my coin with a scissor clamp, and I've hooked that up to the input to my circuit. So if I touch it anywhere on my scissor clamp I activate the circuit and I actually have to touch the metallic object if I put my fingers really close it doesn't trigger but if you touch it anywhere on the metallic sensor it will trigger the switch so here's my circuit here's my RC values for my oscillator so this is my C this is my R I'm using a 0.47 in this case, so I'm getting about 100 Hz clock frequency. And this is my flip-flop, which is driving my LED. And all my inputs that are not being used, I'm tying them to ground. You actually have to do that when you're designing with the CMOS ICs 
otherwise you could get, could get oscillations. Also have a, a decoupling cap here, a little bit of filtering for the circuit. So in this video, it was more of an educational video on a capacitive touch switch, and you learn about RC inverter oscillator, a Schmidt trigger NAND gate, and a D flip flop, and propagation delays, and how you could use them to your advantage. So hope this video gave you some ideas how you could build your own capacitive touch switch.